What's going on YouTube? This is your everyday winner here and a couple new things you guys are seeing about this video is that a whole new layout as you can see all around me over here and I give 100% credit of this layout to Dinozord's channel link will be in the description go look down there he's a pretty good friend of mine and he um he just made this layout for me because I told him that I needed help making a layout so he helped me out and that was really nice of him but anyways, I haven't made one of these battles for a while, and this is just a standard OU battle that I had against a guy on the Smogan Battle Finder. So without further further ado, let's get into the battle. All right, so neither of us really have two OU team. Well, that oh that overpowered of OU teams. As you can see, I have some uh, lower tier Pokemon on my team, and he has some lower tier Pokemon on, on his team. But if you can tell. His team is a lot more defensive than mine, but we're going to have to see how that plays out. So, he's going to end up leading with a Mian Xiao, and I'm going to lead off with my Hydreigon. I really don't know why I led with this Hydreigon. I'm pretty sure it's Expert Bell. I don't think it's Scarfed or Choiced in any way. But, for some reason, I switched out to the Espeon. Really bad play on my part, because I completely forgot how uh, lead Mian Xiao's work. I forgot about the fake out. I could have easily switched to Porygon too, but then I would have been at risk for the high jump kick. But this Mian Xiao really counters my team. So, one of my only counters to it is Dragonite, which I go out to right now, thinking that he would go for a U-turn or something, but he doesn't. He just straight up switches out into his Murkrow. I don't know if he doesn't have U-turn or anything, but... He goes. He ends up going for the Parish Song to do the Parish Song trap, and I'm completely aware of this because I used to run this set of Murkrow. But I go for the Choice Bandit Outrage, and that wrecks that Murkrow. It is completely destroyed. So he goes to Wobbuffet now. I am locked in Outrage. I can't do anything. He's he's gonna go for the counter. All I can hope for is that maybe some crazy way that this Wobbuffet can get knocked out, or if I get a crit, and I don't get lucky in that sense. So he goes for the counter, and that is easily going to take out my Dragonite. No problem at all. So now that um, I have his Murkrow out of the way, that's one wall of the way, and I'm happy that Dragonite got to take care of that. So since um, Wobbuffet has no direct attacks, there's no way that I could directly attack. I go out into Caracosta, I'm thinking about setting up some Shell Smashes. I know Wobbuffet usually um, runs... Um, Mirror Coat, Destiny Bond, Safeguard, and Counter. I already saw Counter. I'm pretty sure it can only have like one or two more moves, but there's not really much of a point in having those moves. So, I'm assuming he's just going to keep going for Destiny Bonds, and I'm just going to keep going for Shell Smashes until he decides to not go for Destiny Bond. And he doesn't go for Destiny Bond this turn. He ends up uh, going for Safeguard instead, which is really weird. I thought he'd go for Destiny Bond again since he would think, oh, after setting up one Shell Smash, he'd want to attack. But no... Not at all. Weird. So, since I know I'm faster than him and he went for Safeguard, I'm going to go for Waterfall and take out that Wobbuffet. So, I'm in possible sweeping position right now. It depends on what happens. So, he goes out into his Duck Drio, goes for the Priority Sucker Punch. He gets a crit. Uh, no, he doesn't get a crit. For some reason, I remember him getting a crit. Uh, oh no, there, there's a crit later in this battle that could have um, changed things, but he goes for the Sucker Punch, does about two-thirds to me. I go for the Waterfall, easy, easy, easy KO. Without Shell Smashes, I would have even destroyed it. So he goes into his Mian Chow, goes for the Fake Out. This is where the um, questionable crit comes in. I don't know if that crit mattered or not, because I do have the resistance. I know Caracosta has relatively good defense, just natural defense, even though I don't have any uh, in defense investment. But nevertheless, Karakos is taken out, at least you gotta take down one Pokemon. I go into my Conkelder, and I'm gonna have to play this Pokemon really smart for the rest of the game if I'm gonna wanna win. Because this is my last Pokemon that I have to, uh, solidly take any hit from the Mian Xiao, as you can see by my team up there. there. But, he switches out into his Magnezone, which is really weird, so I set up a sub on the Switch. He sets up a sub, which I forgot Magnezone runs sub because I'm still getting back into Wi-Fi battling. So this is my sub punching on Conk Helder. So I go for the focus punch when I could have easily gone for the mock punch, gotten uh, two mock punches off. But I go for the mock punches, the mock punch right now, anyways. But that's not gonna kill uh, Magnezone. Not enough power. He barely has enough HP to set it up another sub. So that's what he's gonna do. I'm gonna have to um, mock punch or focus punch again to break that sub, and he's most likely going to attack to break the sub of my own. 
So, I go for the mock punch, just figured priority, easiest way to do, I'll break this up, nothing can really go wrong, nothing does go wrong. So he goes for the T-Bolt, that is going to break my sub, no doubt about it. So, now he figures I'm going to go for another mock punch. That's exactly what I'm going to do. He really doesn't have much on his team to take a mock punch at all. So he decides to go into Mianchao because he's going to want to get off that fake out again because fake out is a priority move and since Mianchao is faster than my Conkeldur, that fake out is going to beat mock punch. So I decide to stay in. I really don't want to switch into anything else at the point at this point right now. So I take the fake out. I take it like a champ. That does like maybe an eighth, if anything. So, he's going to go for the high jump kick. I know that's going to do a lot. Mian Chao is a very powerful poke. I get really close to dying. If I went for the mock punch right there, that would have just ended it. If I just used common sense said, oh, he has life orb. He's going to hurt himself. Mock punch will kill the next turn. Then, that could have made this battle a lot easier. But, wait. I think I just... No, that was the next turn that, um... I used mock punch. Yeah, I, I was confusing myself there, but um, I could have easily taken out the Mian Chao. That would have been the end of it. I don't want my Conkelder to possibly die to a fake out here, so I'm going to go out onto my second best poke to take it. And in this situation, that is Porygon to my wall on this team. So he takes it about just as good as Conkelder does, and that is pretty sweet for me. So. He does have U-Turn, which I don't understand why he didn't go for it before on Por- No, not Porygon, uh, Espeon. But, anyways, he's going to go out into his Porygon- Why? Oh, I need to learn to talk. He goes out into his Blissey. I go for the T-Wave trying to paralyze that man shell. My Porygon 2 can do absolutely nothing to his Blissey. So, I switch into Hydreigon, predicting that he's gonna think that I'm gonna switch out to Conkelder and just being able to take whatever he has. But, he just goes for the Toxic anyways, I would've- I don't think my Conkelder has Guts, so I don't think that would've really made much of a difference. And this Hydreigon does have Focus Blast, and it is Expert Belt, but look, look at- What?! That did like nothing! Does he have 252 HP 252 Spec D? Uh, I, I, that's really disappointing when I see stuff like that happen. I mean, like, I hate- this is why I hate Blissey, because he's a little... Bitch. Blissey's a bitch. So... I don't know why he goes for the flamethrower here, this might be his only attacking move, but Conkelder does live it, because Conkelder is a boss. And from what I remember, I think I go for the Mach Punch, yeah, I go for the Mach Punch, get as much damage as I can get done on that Blissey, because Blissey does have terrible defense, it is super effective, and it is stab, but it does just about, about as much as Focus Blast. And I remember right here, I get really, really, really lucky, and this might have just won me the battle. I get two para hacks in a row. Both times I use mock punch, I get para hacks on Blissey. So that means with the third mock punch, since it is priority, I will be able to take out that Blissey. And I think that's what got me the battle. I don't know how it would have went if um that if he didn't get para hacks at all. But thank God I got to destroy a Blissey. It felt really good to be honest. Oh, I hate Blissey so much, just like the rest of us. But after that, that basically got me the battle. Um, he goes out into his Mian Chao. I switch out, saving my Conkelder just in case anything really stupid happens. And um, I'll need it later. Even though... Oh yeah, I have a fake out. I forgot about that. I go into Porygon 2, take the fake out. I don't even think I switch out. Just to uh, take the high jump kick, see if I can live one. Maybe get an attack off. And just have uh, Conkelder finish it after I realize in this point in the battle that I could start life orb stalling it. But instead of um sacrificing my SB on the life all the life orb stall it some more, I uh go for the mock punch. He goes for high jump kick. That's gonna kill me. Life orb's gonna kill him. So that was a great battle. And uh like this video if you guys enjoyed because this isn't easy to record because I don't even oh wait. Life orb doesn't kill him. I end up killing him off of Hydreigon. But uh, Hydreigon was even alive. But anyways like this video if you guys enjoyed. I went through a lot of I go through a lot of work to make these videos and I'm still waiting for a webcam, so I'm recording off my phone. So until next time, peace out.